Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. I mean to tell you something right now. It is raining down here in Western North Carolina. Cold too. It's raining and cold. That's okay because I've got a kerosene heater that's probably going to run out of kerosene in the next couple hours, which means we have to work quick. Here's what we're building today. I told you in a couple few videos, I don't even remember when it was now. Can you hear that? Mercy. Anyway, uh, we have a Keurig, just like 98.99% of the world. And the little K-cup thing that you stick all the coffee in, well, it's made out of plastic and it's junk and it's, I don't like it and it tips over. And so I'm going to build a shelf. We have a little coffee area in our kitchen. Uh, and so I'm going to build a shelf that goes above that. That is going to have two shelves for coffee cups, and then it's going to have three to hold the K cups. And the three that hold the K cups are going to be on a little bit of an angle. Um, all I know for sure is that it needs to be 36 and a quarter inches. 36 and a quarter? 36 and a quarter wide, and it needs to be 28 inches tall. That's what I know. And I know that my coffee cup shelves need to be five inches apart. Other than that, it's up to interpretation. I'm breaking a little bit of my own rule here in that I did not mill up my lumber last night. I came out last night, but it was nine o'clock and I was tired and I didn't really feel like doing it, if I'm being honest. So I milled it up this morning, took about a two hour break to eat lunch, came out, took it the rest of the way down to its correct size. So we're just going to go ahead and start building. And listen, folks, I've seen Norm Abram do it a million times. Okay mill up his lumber, go straight to work. And you, you seen the stuff that he built? All right then, let's just get busy. So again, I know my uprights need to be 28 inches, but this is a great time to take a look at the wood you're working with. This is some of that cherry that I just made that last product project out of. Uh, I get this big gnarly knot right here that if I can get rid of, great. Uh, but I have a feeling that I didn't leave enough room. Well, technically I could just cut that out. All right. So in that case, I'm going to look for snipe because you know how I feel about that. And actually, oh, I got a little bit of a booger there too. What if I can take it right out of the middle? I say we try it and see what happens. If I'm short, we'll alter the plans. I think we'll be all right. I'm going to cut that knot first so I can get as close as possible. Hey, she's back up and running. Uh, this piece here broke, which has been replaced. And then in replacing that, the pivot pin, I destroyed it. It was terrible. Vice grips are not always your best friend. So got that part in, got it put together. She's solid. So, all right. Uh, so I'm going to cut this part out. The only thing I need to work on with this is some dust collection. Because even with everything hooked up, it's still, it's a, every miter saw is, does that. But yeah. Okay, so it's still raining. I had to do a little bit more milling and get all these cut down to the right sizes and everything like that. So that's all done, good to go. Uh, I have to cut some dados. Oh, forgot the one at the top. We'll go ahead and get these ones cut anyway. Uh, I was gonna use a my dado stack at three quarters of an inch, but I didn't have enough thread on the nut. Like I could get it on and get it tight, but you know, they say that you ought to be able to see one thread when everything's tight. I didn't, I didn't even have Arbor. So I'm going to do a three eighths. That's half a three quarter. If I counted my toes, right. And you know, I had sacrificial fence and everything set up. I tried to be a professional woodworker here. 
Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> Professional woodworker, he says. So, what I'm going to have to do is line this up. I am set at 3 8 height because I want to dado my shelves in. Um, my uprights are 3 quarter. Half of that is 3 8 Two 3 8 is, yeah, okay. You understand what I'm saying. I have to walk over here and get the, uh, you know, dust collection. Can't see nothing. I'm going to purposely miss the line and then come back to it just because I know me. And I need to not have my hand right there. As it turned out, I took the line. A shelf. I have water on my safety glasses. I have no idea where it came from. But that could be bad. Anyway. Okay. I'm a little bit off. I'm a little bit thick. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind. We'll go ahead and cut this one. Good. That one's better. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get the other one cut. And I'll check back in. Okay, so last night I milled up some more wood. As it turned out, it's kind of it's kind of janky looking wood. Um, this has got a big blowout in it, but I mean I'm going to use it anyway because I don't feel like milling up no more wood. This is a beautiful piece right here. Does that count for anything? Here's the thing: these are going to have holes drilled in them anyway. A lot of this jankiness is going to go away. Uh, but now I have to do math because now I got to actually think about the coffee pod as we know it. Um, how many can I get across here? How far is my spacing going to be? There's a, I know the top of the pod is two inches. I know the bottom of the pod is inch and a half. So here's the thing. I want them to stick up a little bit because first thing in the morning when I'm trying to make coffee, I don't need nothing holding me back from getting my coffee. So. This morning I uh, had to make a, there's no such thing as a quick run to Harbor Freight for me anymore. Uh, the nearest Harbor Freight is 50 minutes away. And I chose to go to the one that was 60 minutes away because I'd rather drive on the highway than on a mountain road. Anyway, uh, long story short, went and got some Forstner bits finally. Um, I don't know if they're any good. I read some, I read some reviews on them and people seem to like them and uh, for the price, if they're not, then it's fine. I went down to the local hardware store, and for one bit, they wanted $38, and I paid $40 for the entire set. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to do some math, figure out, map out some lines. I don't know if you can see it or not, but over in the corner, I finally got my drill press put together because the thing about starting to make projects is I have to start getting my tools back because... I don't want to have to try and hand drill every single one of these. That'll end horribly. So I'm going to get this figured out and then I'll bring you back in when we're ready to start drilling.
So this project went left really quick. The wood that I originally milled up for the coffee pod shelves was horrible. It had knots, it had junk. I mentioned it earlier. So I went ahead and just milled some new stuff because I needed to make it um, a quarter inch wider than what it originally was anyway. And then we went back and forth as to what size bit was the best to hold a coffee pod. I went with inch and three quarter. I can grab it really easily. Um, got it as evenly spaced as I think we can. I have no idea how many this holds, but it holds enough. So it's dark out and I'm tired and I have church tomorrow. So all I have to do is drill out two more of these and then I'm ready to start sanding and putting them together. Um, you saw with the Forstner bits, I've never owned Forstner bits, but I've been told that you have to go slow. My drill press will only go down to 600 RPM. You know, that's if you move the belt down. And so you just have to take your time with these Harbor Freight ones. Um, I was trying to go faster than what it should be and it will stop. But you saw that um, in the end, it cuts. You just don't be in a hurry. Don't don't try to do this on a Saturday night before church. Wait a minute. That's what I just did. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and let this set tomorrow. Maybe I'm on the golf course. I'm not sure. But if I'm not, I'll be here in the shop getting this thing finished up. If I'm going to try and have the video up by Tuesday. Maybe it'll come out on Wednesday. We'll wait and see. I don't know. In the meantime, have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, the wifey poo came out to the shop last night. Have a look at the progress. And the first thing she said is, what's taking so long? Well, you know, it is what it is. Um, she likes the design. She likes where it's going. She asked if my design could have a router on one edge of the front of the shelves. I was just going to do a round over, but then I decided I'm going to pick my favorite router bit, the same one I use on everything. And I'm just going to run a quick, pretty design down the front. What I've done is I've measured in three eighths from either side because that's what my dado, my rabbit, my slot, the thing that this is going to set into. Y'all need to tell me what that's called. I cut it with a dado blade. Is it a dado? Is it a rabbit? Is it a slot? Tell me what it is. Okay. Anyway, it's going to set into the uprights three eighths. And so there's no sense, you know, if you take it all the way in and it's, you're going to have this design in there. I think, I think it's going to look silly. So I'm going to start my route at three eighths in and I'm going to end it at three eighths in. And that'll give us a nice design. I've already got one shelf done. I don't even know where the other shelf is, but I'll find it and do that too. Okay, a few more times like that. Well, actually, one more time like that. Mercy. And that's done. I can start sanding. I have one more shelf. You can't see because I got junk everywhere. I got one more shelf that I got to put holes in. Uh, but the truth of the matter is the, the Forstner bits, they are the cheapest Forstner bits you can buy. It is a slow process. And, you know, the old Delta 8-inch drill press, she's only running on a quarter horsepower motor. And so that gets tired. So I, I was cutting earlier. I gave it a break because it's tired and it wants to take a break. So I think I'm going to jump back to that. I'm pretty close to sanding, which means I'm pretty close to gluing. Uh, I did find a quart of polyurethane. Um, I have no idea how old it is. It's easily a year or two, but I opened it up, had a look at it. She's in good shape. The poly's in good shape. It's a satin poly, which is what I wanted to use anyway. And I'll talk about that when I'm ready to slap it on here. Uh, in the meantime, I got to go back to drilling holes for crying out loud. I probably got three hours wrapped up in drilling holes. So there you go. Okay, so it's actually Monday. Uh, I did get out on the golf course yesterday. I only played nine. Played absolutely horribly. 
but it was a beautiful day and that's all that matters uh, but i did come out sunday evening uh to do some stuff and just didn't film anything i'm a good youtuber folks let me show you what i did um i did get a couple shots of it i'll plop them in there uh, you saw me do all these but i needed some dados this way my coffee shelves keep it down so basically that's just gonna stick in there you know there's something flying in my foot and at an angle so I can get my coffee um, and the only thing I did to determine you know where I wanted to I don't do angles that's hard I just held it up and I said yep that looks good and I marked it at the back and at the front where I wanted the top of the shelf to be. And that's just what I went off of. I just cut it that way. I took, uh, again, Harbor Freight angle finder. Finder. Um, this is one thing I'll tell you. I, I This is the Pittsburgh brand of Harbor Freight. Don't get this one. It's just not good. Um, and was able to use this to set the miter gauge on my saw and then run these through. Uh, here's what I've learned. I need some practice cutting dados. Not like, I mean, just and it's, you're good to go, but I tend to make one cut more than I should and then it's all sloppy. Overcome, you know. Uh, I've heard different woodworkers workers say they're the king of this or the king of that. And pocket hole seems to be the big thing. I'm the king of pocket hole. I am the king of the sliver. Okay. If there's a dado that don't fit right, I, here's a sliver right here, as a matter of fact. Sliver. Glue that bad boy in. You're good to go. But, okay, enough about that. What I have to do... Uh, because I didn't think about this ahead of time, why would I, was how am I going to attach this to the wall? Because it's going to hang on the wall. Um, my first thought was, they call them keyhole slots. Screw goes in, slides up, you just router out a little space for it. Um, and that would be great, except where this is hanging i've made it to fit exactly the width of the wall which means i'm going to just if i catch the two by four i'm just barely going to catch it so what <coughs> trying to breathe and talk so what i'm going to do these are where my three top shelves go i'm just going to cut another dado here and run a piece across the back and use that as an attacher attacher i'm going to that's where i'm going to run the screw through and hang it up uh, I, I have a giant mess going on that I need to clean a little bit up so that I can get back to my table saw. Um, I see that I changed my dado blade out, which means I'm going to have to put it back in again. If I was an organized man, boom, done. But let me get all that going. And then I think after that, I'm actually ready to start gluing up. I did a little bit of pre-sanding. I cut this in the back, put that piece in. I'm ready to start putting this thing together. So I'm going to change out my blade and we're going to get ready to start doing that. Well, hidey ho, neighbor. Glued up. We're going to let her dry. I'm going to have to sand the whole thing again. I'm seeing things that I have to fix, but that's okay. You know, that's okay. The wife was just here, actually helped me put this double clamp together, which tells me that I need to buy two more long clamps. I feel like, I feel like I'm not seeing you guys. Anyway, but it's all clamped together. 
we're gonna let this thing sit overnight. Tomorrow's two, no, tomorrow's Wednesday. I might be able to work on it tomorrow, I doubt it. Um, Thursday, nope, not Thursday either, Friday. Huh, Friday, I'll work on it. Uh, get it sanded and then start, I'm gonna use polyurethane on this. Before y'all cringe, I love polyurethane. Before you guys start saying, oh, is it food safe? Tis gray area. Uh, it dries as a plastic finish. And uh, that's good enough for me. Um, it, it's got coffee cups on it. It doesn't have to be food safe. So anyway, I'm going to let this dry. I checked it for square. It's ish, close enough for me. You know, it's close enough that the cups aren't going to fall off there. So I'm going to let this dry. I, I need a haircut. Have you seen this? Uh, and my barber is in the house and she said, tonight's the night. So I got to go get that. I'll see you folks. I don't know. You'll see it whenever it's a click. I'll be, I'll click and be right back tomorrow. Okay. Let me get you all caught up here is what happened. Uh, I snuck out last night after some stuff that was going on and got this all sanded the glue up you know went like a glue up does everyone said oh it was a stressful glue up this wasn't a stressful glue up until i started the glue up then it became stressful but it's together it's not perfect it's not perfect um one of these shelves i don't remember which one i think it's this one um it needed to push forward a little bit and i was too chaotic and getting everything else done and i missed it and then the glue set up you know how that works it ain't gonna move now so um i did get the cross piece put in that this is oh get on there this is what i'm going to use to screw it to the wall my wife and i went back and forth on that and she recommended this and i'm a good husband so i listen so it's all sanded uh i ran over it with a extremely light damp tack rag otherwise known as a kitchen rag i stole out of the wife's kitchen um and so it's it's ready to go uh, i have some polyurethane right chia your basic minwax satin oil base polyurethane now i'll give you a little tip here you probably already know but this goes back to my floor sanding days because that's all we used was oil-based polyurethane on floors and everybody wanted satin. Well, this has been sitting for at least two years. Stir this up, okay? If you just open the lid and start slapping it on there, it'll cover, it'll be fine, but it's not gonna be satin, okay? Whatever the additive is that they put into satin polyurethane, in time, it sinks to the bottom. So stir this up if you're gonna use it. Even if you buy it brand new off the shelf, stir it up. There's two different sides of the fence on how to do this. Um, some people say you shouldn't shake the can because it'll create bubbles in the finish and blah, 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 blah. I don't necessarily agree with that. But if you just want to take a stick and stir it, you can do it that way too. I'm not going to. Because I feel like when you're brushing it on, you can get those bubbles out. The bubbles aren't going to stay in there. Is what I'm trying to say. So let me get this set up and then we'll get ready to start throwing some finish on this. Maybe I'll get this hung up on Saturday. Nope. White's birthday, Sunday. Nope. I'll get it hung up. You'll see it. Okay. I think the poly is all doing poly things. I shook it. Um, maybe since I got a dial sitting here, we'll just make sure. Oh my. I'm going to zoom that in so you can see that. That's your satin. Okay, so shaking it wasn't enough. This is poly shaken, not stirred. Or stirred, not shaken. I don't know. I don't drink, so I don't know what a margarita, not a margarita. What is it? Someone help me out here. Martini? Yeah. What did 007 always drink? Martini, shaken, not stirred. Just put that poly anywhere. That'll be fine. So I'll go ahead. Oh, my. Okay. 
I'm not ready to have poly all over me yet. So while I'm stirring this up, I'll give you my next tidbit of advice that maybe is overlooked. I don't know. Before I start throwing finish on any project, for that matter, big or small, I always map out a game plan, especially something like this, where you've got um, oh my shelves and uh, tops and bottoms and undersides and backsides and you know I, I I think it's important to have a game plan. So, for instance, in this case, are we getting anywhere here? Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. So in this case, I'm going to start with the entire piece upside down. And I'm going to put this over here out of the way. And I'm going to get all the bottoms, all the insides. And then I'm going to do the back. Okay. I'm going to start with the holes because I feel like that's going to be the biggest nightmare. So once I have that done, I can still grab it by the sides flip it over, I'm not going to do the very bottom, we call them the feet or whatever you want to call them. I can do those last. I can do that after everything else is done and just cover that up. There's not going to be anything on there. Two coats, plenty. So I'm going to do all the holes, all the bottoms and the insides. That was my washing machine. Um, then I'll flip it over do the top, tops of the shelves, then the outsides should be good to go. Maybe. Okay, let's see how it goes. I will say I've never used oil-based poly and these little foamy brushes. So we'll see. Problem is, I could really use a ladder. That's going all right. When I started making projects, I started using water-based polyurethane. It has its advantages. Like you can get, really, if you time it out right, you can get three or four coats on something in a day, depending on how big the project is. But like I said before, I have in the flooring industry, you we, we've always used oil-based poly. And I love how it brings the look of the wood out, especially with cherry, because I don't know, it just looks nicer. Same with oak, same with everything as far as I'm concerned. Um, I've used water-based poly on, a, on quite a few projects, and this is going to sound kind of harsh, but I don't think water-based poly got a soul you know it doesn't do nothing for the wood as far as i'm concerned now i'm not if you use it and you like it i'm not going to tell you you're wrong for me it's not not my, not my deal so all right i'm probably just gonna whoop, high speed the rest of this if i'm even going to let you see the whole thing because this is even boring for me i can imagine what it's like for you I will say my other concern, I'm going to have to put these coats on light because especially on this bottom, the bottom shelves that are slanted, angled, whatever the proper term is, it's going to have a tendency to want to run and I don't want to really deal with that. So I'm going to put those coats on really light and hopefully avoid that. Uh, I was only going to do two coats on this. Um, Again, going back to hardwood flooring, all we ever did was two coats. Oil-based polyurethane is, it's, you know, pretty resilient, okay? But, wifey poo. Wifey poo said on the cup shelves, maybe we ought to put three. And, um, so again, I've been married long enough that I just agree, you know. Sure, let's do three. But if I'm going to do three coats on just two shelves, I'm going to do three coats on everything. So, you know, that's how that is. All right. 
I'm done talking now. I got to concentrate on what I'm doing. We don't want no misses or, or misters for that matter. So, all right, I'm going to high speed it from here. Okay, first coat's done. It took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to take. Ooh. Uh, and there's a drip <clears throat> that I'm going to have to get, and I just threw my paintbrushes away. But be willing to pivot, even though you've mapped out a game plan as to how you're going to do it. What I found was the front holes are easier to get from the front of the shelf. The back holes are easier to get upside down than, you know, so you just you learn the first coat what the best way is to do it but uh man that color right it's just that's what that's the color i was hoping to get um the first coat's always the biggest pain to do when you do the second coat it goes on a lot easier because the first coat sinks into all the wood you know that's why you have to come back and you know sand it or light sand it and all that um the second coat always goes on better because it Normally, we'll just lay on top uh, and just look pretty and do top coat stuff. So this is going to have to dry full 24 hours overnight anyway. So uh, I might be able to get back up tomorrow and put a second coat on it. And hopefully at some point get it up over the weekend. And I'll let you guys see what that looks like when it's up on the wall. So I got to get that brush back out of the garbage. Let me get that drip. That's going to just easy moly moly. Get your runs while they're wet. This polyurethane dries plastic. Okay. So if you let that drip or that run dry, it's going to be a nightmare when it comes time to sand this first coat. I must have put a gallon of poly right there. There we go. That should work. Even though I went through and checked it the first time, that one just showed up. I think we'll just kind of leave that there. All right. I'm going to go finish my laundry, get something to eat, and then I got something to do tonight. So I'll see you guys when this thing's hanging up in the kitchen. If I was Vanna White, I'd know how to do this better. But there you go. This was what I had in mind whenever I designed this. It came out pretty much exactly the way I wanted it to. The color is absolutely gorgeous. Are you kidding me with this cherry? Um, it actually matches closer than I thought it did to the kitchen cabinets. It's a smidgen darker. I'm down two pods. Time to reorder. Uh, it's got all my favorite cups up there. We got, the, what is this, the cappuccino? I don't know, tea maybe, decaffeinated. What is that? No. We don't do decaf. And then, of course, my wife's is full. Um, but there you go. It's a really, actually, fairly simple design that I overcomplicated. I do love the routered bits on the front, the little design there. I think that was the, the right choice to make. It looks beautiful. I'm excited. I'm glad to have it out of the shop because it takes up most of my tabletop, my worktop. So now all i got to do is get some more coffee, get this thing loaded up, and start drinking. Um, but what I need to do right now is get busy because today's my wife's birthday. 
And if you remember how tragically I screwed it up last year, I'm, I'm going with a fail safe this year, her favorite meal, and I know how to cook it. So anyway, that's my project. I've got more coming out next week. Um, in the meantime, thanks for watching. God bless you. I'll see you on the next one.